Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Journey of Awakening podcast. In today's episode, we're going to dive um, into the book of Revelation again and discuss the, um, the letter that John wrote to the church in Smyrna. So in this particular section, uh, John wrote to the church in Smyrna, and um, he writes to the angel of the church in Smyrna. So these are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. All right, so there are a couple things I want to point out in John's letter to the church in Smyrna. The word Jew originates in the original Hebrew word Jehuda, meaning from the kingdom of Judah. Judah is a personification of the state of consciousness representing praise. Jerusalem is the city of peace. It is really the mind. It is the mind of Christ, which is imagination, according to Neville Goddard, who was a mystic. Um, It's a place of peace, often called Zion. Israel represents man after God's own heart. Now, I thought I would provide some insight from the Hebrew definitions in conjunction with the mystical perspective because Hebrew is the ancient tongue. The Bible was written in Hebrew. Um, There is um, all types of symbolism uh, in the Bible. And so the Bible isn't meant to be easily understood, right? It's just not. It unveils itself to the awakened man, to the one who has a hunger for God's word. So there, so the Bible reveals itself. It state it actually. The Bible talks about that. Um, how uh, the symbolism reveals itself. So my. Insight, my take is not from a secular point of view. So I just wanted to make that clear. And it's okay if it doesn't resonate with everybody. It's not going to. Uh, Let's see. All right. So death. All right. So death means to die to the old man, meaning a former version of ourselves. Having experience the power and the wisdom of God, right? The awakened man dies to his former self and thereby lives. The messenger of God tells the church, which is a body of believers who think they know Christ, I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. So our Father in heaven is within us as us. God is within every man. And heaven is within the mind of man. Everything is within. Everything we experience is within. It's experienced within our own being, right? Um, Our soul, the source of who we are, embodying this human physical form. And then it is reflected outward on the screen of space. And we are seeing within our awareness our own creations, all right? So, um, our afflictions, right, talked about in this passage, and poverty are known because we have been put through these furnaces of affliction for a purpose. 
yet we're rich because the power to change what we experience is all within us. So we come into that knowledge of knowing that we are the creators and seeing what we have created and understanding why we have gone through what we went through and knowing that we have the the ability within us to change anything because of who we are. So this uh, the synagogue of Satan represents those who doubt, those who do not believe in the true Christ, right? The power and the wisdom of God, which again is within every man, um, every awakened man. So there's no need to fear to suffer. Um, we create our own suffering and we have the power to change it. All right. Um, I lost my place. Oh, okay. So in, in doubting our true power as God, right? The creative aspect of man will put it to the test. And in doing so, right, as we test this power, uh, the creative power, uh, the passage is basically stating we will suffer persecution. Um, and that's because others may believe us and or others may not believe us. So sharing this information, right, um, is not like not everybody believes um, and that's okay. There are, you know, other teachers out there through all, like throughout history. Okay. You have uh, teachers and, in, in, of course, the Bible, the word of God, you know, there are some believe in uh, some who, who don't believe that is part of the process. It's part of the journey. Right. Um, and that's okay. Right. We're all going through the, we're all different points on our journey. So, um, again, you know, this passage is saying we'll suffer persecution and others may not believe us, but we must be faithful and persist to the point of discarding our old beliefs, our old patterns and ways of thinking. So if this stuff resonates with you, just remember that be faithful and persist discarding your old beliefs. And Neville talks about this in his lectures, um, remaining faithful and being persistent. All right, so when we're able to do this, right, be faithful and persist, you know, in our assumptions, discarding our old beliefs and old patterns and ways of thinking, dying to the old man, all of that, then we receive life, and it is eternal life as we rise to higher states of consciousness. So, let those who hear the word of God believe the word. They will not be hurt by the second death because they will live in eternity with the Elohim. And Elohim is plural for uh, meaning more than one God because we are all aspects of the one God, right? Fragmented out. We are all God. Um, we are all part of the um, the. Elohim, right? And um, yeah, I probably should get too deep into the Elohim. I'll cover I'll cover that, you know, in future episodes and stuff. There's a a lot of information there, <laughs> um, you know, with other dimensions and and uh, beings and our future selves and and you know things like that. So um, the ten days in this passage. Um, represents divine order. It's a completed cycle, measure or a group, like a congregation, whether for good or evil, blessing or judgment. And it's all symbolism, vision, and the story of awakening man. So, uh, as I have mentioned, you know, in, in previous posts and on the podcast here, the Bible is telling a psychological story. One that takes place in man. Now, awakening begins at the end of Revelation and unfolds from Revelation through Matthew backwards. The Old Testament is simply a foretelling of the New Testament. What is going to unfold as man awakens. So, just imagine, you know, all that you've been taught about the Bible. 
imagine that it is not true. So forget what you know and um, realize that secular, like the churches, um, t reading the Bible and, and most tell it from a secular point of view, not understanding the true symbolism. And, you know, there have been those who have studied the Bible and be, been able to pick out, you know, uh, symbolism and decipher it, you know, in, in certain ways. But it really, it really a lot comes through revelation. Like, for me personally, um, after my awakening, reading scripture now, like, there's not all of it. I've talked about this before, too, but, like, I'll read through a passage, and it's like, it's like it just, it, it makes sense from a mystical point of view now, right? Because, the veil, for me, the veil has lifted, and... um you know, and uh, uh, scripture is just something that really resonates with me. And my guess is, um, just from, you know, observing others and other teachers and stuff, that um, different types of teachings resonate with different people. So they're, they, the information they bring forth um, is based on, well, for any of us, it's based on our own uh, experience and awareness, right, and um, and knowledge. So everybody has different takes on on certain things. So for me, again, the Bible. Um, some comes from Neville Goddard's teachings, and of course, he was a mystic, so he received a lot of revelation as well. And then, uh, and then revelation comes through for me too. So, um, you know, I'm just I'm sharing what I understand um, based on my own experiences and what's come through for me. Um, and it's just a different, a, a different uh, perception, right? So anyway, that is it for today's episode. Uh, just take what resonates with you. Um, the knowledge of the universe resides within you, right? And the knowledge will unveil itself as you awaken. So just observe what resonates. All right. So thank you so much for joining me for uh, today's episode. And I will see you all next time. Bye now.